Country number three on our list is Antigua and Barbuda, a country of some 100,000 inhabitants, a half hour flight southeast of St. Kitts. We've barely set foot in Antigua before the country's Citizenship by Investment program announces its presence to us. Antigua and Barbuda has been operating a Citizenship by Investment program since 2013, and already by 2017, the program accounted for as much as a fifth of the country's GDP, according to recent statements from Prime Minister Gaston Brown. Here are some key facts about the Antigua and Barbuda CIP. A passport from Antigua and Barbuda grants visa-free access to 140 countries, including Schengen, the UK, Singapore, and Hong Kong. There are three ways of qualifying for Antiguan citizenship by investment. The two most common are either a $200,000 US dollar investment in real estate or a $100,000 cash donation to the government's National Development Fund. Antigua additionally provides the option to invest, alone or as part of a group, between 400,000 US dollars and 1.5 million in an approved business venture. Caribbean people are well known for their playful and easygoing approach to life, which makes my northern European and business-like approach to travel seem totally out of place. A gentleman outside the airport thinks I'm taking my arrival in this holiday paradise a little too seriously and shows me how it's done. Okay, I saw Missy. See, that's how to make the dashing entrance. I saw Missy. Oh, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. So look for the damn spider Come on. He sure showed me how to make a dashing entrance. I resolved to make an effort the next time I land in a new country. We hail a cab and head for our lodgings. We've come to notice that, in the Caribbean, nearly all the taxis are minibuses. The reason for which, we're told, is that most customers are tourists, who generally travel in groups. And the tourism sector is booming in the Caribbean. And even though we're here on business, we're generally treated as holiday makers, because that's what everyone presumes we are. As we arrive at the hotel, the staff, mistaking me for another tourist, kindly offer me a welcome drink. Nutmeg-infused rum punch, even though it's barely 10 in the morning. Don't mind if I do. I may well be here on business, but he doesn't know that, and I'm in no rush to correct the misapprehension. <laughs> For a country of barely 100,000 inhabitants, Antigua punches far above its weight in terms of tourist arrivals. The country attracts more than a million cruise passengers and nearly half a million stayover visitors a year, the great preponderance of whom are British, American, and Canadian. But with so many tropical paradises to choose from in the Caribbean, why do they come here exactly? Ask any local and they'll give you the same answer. The white sand beaches. Antigua's got them in spades. Officially, it has 365 of them. Except during leap years, of course, when they have one extra. We make our way to the country's capital, St. John's, just in time for lunch at Hemingway's, a restaurant named after the acclaimed author who reportedly enjoyed daily daiquiris here in the 1930s. This came into Hemingway's. Um, it was then said that between 1934 and 1936 that Ernest Hemingway's came back and forth from Key West on his little boat, um, docked at the dock and used to come up here and hang here and all of that. Um, through the years that I've been here, I've met a lot of people here that their grandfathers actually were the caretakers, like they worked as the gardeners and the caretakers in Hemingway's. Um, so I've heard a lot of nice stories about that as well. But so do you mean that he had some sort of stake in this place? I don't think so. I just think that he used to come in and, and write. And uh, as we know, he, he was a very interesting man. After lunch, we take a digestive stroll towards St. John's Market to see if there are any curious souvenirs or knickknacks on offer. Sure enough, this place has it all. Yeah, I'd like to buy a passport. 
What kinds of passport do you have? This is a passport cover. So this is not part of the citizenship by investment program? No. Right? It's empty. All right. This is a protection to cover it. Ah, gotcha. To, to keep it safe. Got it. See, this is not a passport. It's right. Plus, not. But it's only for people with CARICOM passports. I don't have one. No, it's not for CARICOM. It's for any passport. Uh, buy it for you. 5 EC, right? 5 EC. All right, here. So for uh, 5 EC dollars, you can buy no. a Caribbean passport? No. No? No. The cover. You want to sell it or not? Eh? You I'm, wanna... selling, I'm selling you. Yeah, all right. All right, I'll buy it. Don't worry. I'm not worried. But for a serious note though, you, you have one, you have one, you say? You need one, you need one? No, five more. Okay. All right, thanks. So you don't need this one? No, we're good. It's for him anyway. Okay. I don't need mine. I treat my passport like <laughs> anyway, so. All right, thanks, see ya. But enough messing around. We've got to get back to the beach as we've scheduled a sunset cruise on board Captain Sean's sailboat. Antigua's program is managed by the CIU, the head of which is Charmaine Quinlan Donovan. Here's what she told us about processing timelines in Antigua when we spoke to her in Geneva last year. To complete uh, processing applications, or at least uh, providing a response to each applicant within 90 days. What we've been seeing in the last few months, uh, six to eight months, We've seen a cut down in our processing time uh, as our staff become more efficient. Uh, we're seeing we can complete it within 60 days. Sometimes we've been able to, to, to give an approval within 45 days. Once the applicants submit all of the required information uh, and supporting documentation, we can easily uh, review, review the file and, and give a response. Okay, so let me follow up on that question by asking, are there certain applicants that are more challenging to process, that'll take a longer time yes. to process? Yes, those applicants who would have had um, associations with multiple countries, uh, perhaps you've lived in several countries because of work, uh, so we would have to conduct due diligence in each of these territories, as well as if you have business interests in uh, a number of territories, we'd have to conduct due diligence in a number of territories, and it, it, then that uh, increases the length of time it takes to complete the process. Additionally, we've found where persons do not disclose all of the information uh, <laughs> at the beginning of the application process, or if something is uncovered that was not included in the, in the beginning of the application process, we find that we have to uh, go back to the clients to request additional information. So then you have like a pause on the processing until we get the required information and then the processing starts again. So that as well increases the length of time it takes to complete the application. That's it for this episode of Caribbean Citizenship by Investment. But we'll see you next week in another exotic destination. To make sure you don't miss out on that, subscribe to this channel here on YouTube or follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter. You can also follow our weekly newsletter by signing up on our website, imidaily.com. If you're curious to learn more about citizenship by investment programs, send an email to info at imidaily.com. We'd also like to thank the sponsors who made this series possible. I'm Christian Nesame. See you next time.